Good morning and welcome to the first session on chapter 6, Non-Competitive Markets. This is a very, very interesting form of economics where you are going to see the reality-based kind of markets. In the previous chapters, we would have been talking about the perfectly competitive markets, the type of markets where things are pre-decided, much more simple and stable. But in this chapter, we are going to talk about the non-competitive markets, which means the markets which are not stable, a lot of challenge, and a different kind of economy altogether. So going forward, let's try to understand what are the different types of market structures altogether. We have the monopoly, the oligopoly, monopolistic competition, and the perfect competition. But in this chapter, we are going to look into monopoly, duopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic competition. What are the different types put together? Now, the first one, monopoly. Monopoly itself means single player in the market who tries to dominate the price, who tries to dominate the entire market, and who holds the structure altogether. So monopoly means there's only a single seller. Whatever he fix as a price, that's what the consumers have to take. There is no option left with them. And monopoly is the single winner, hands down, in the market altogether. Now, duopoly means there are two sellers in the market who will try to dominate the price. Very, very limited availability of options to the consumer. So in that section also, the consumer will not have much of choice. Only the two sellers in the market will dominate the entire market put together. So that's what we mean by the duopoly altogether. Now, in the third section, we have the monopolistic competition. Before that, we go to monopolistic. We also need to know what is the oligopoly. Oligopoly is just a cartel formation, which means to say that you would see people who have been forming teams together because they want to win over the market at a particular level altogether. They want to mean to say here that, you know, we have already formed. We will not allow any new entrance into the market. We will continue to dominate the market with a predetermined price. So not much of option again available to the consumer. Monopolistic is what you see on the realistic basis. Everyday market, differentiated product, but there are multiple players available in the market. Again, the consumer will have a little bit of shift here and there because there is a little bit of differentiation in the product available. Last but not the least, we have also seen the perfect competition where you have the exact number of buyers and sellers. Now what is really interesting here is the examples that you need to know in each and every section. So starting with monopoly, we start with railways and waterways. Now if you look in India, railways is predominantly one organization which has never ever been challenged. It has always held the monopoly in the kind of transport. Now, there are alternative methods of traveling. Now, instead of railways, I can go by airways, I can go by roadways, I can come across in different factors. But then, when you talk about monopoly in railways, there's only one person. So, there is no substitute for railways. You don't have a private railway organization. It is run by the government, so the railways controls the price, railways controls your reservation. They decide how many trains to run every day and what kind of routes they are going to go through. So it is completely controlled by a single-handed organization altogether. That's a perfect monopoly altogether. Next one, duopoly. Now in duopoly, if you start seeing, it's a theoretical form of organization. So you don't see literally duopoly in terms of a practical market, but then just to understand duopoly is something, an internal agreement that's made between two companies put together who decide the price and who want to stick together so that the profit is restrained between both of them. So that's what is a duopoly altogether. Now, oligopoly, this is one very, very interesting area to look into. After the year 1996, we started seeing private airlines coming into picture. So airlines is a very right example for the oligopoly. 
Now, there are a group of private airlines who want to dominate the sector called aviation. Now, if you look at OPEC, oil producing exporting countries, even they are a group of countries who dominate the crude oil price altogether. So when we talk about oligopoly, that means a group of firms have joined hands and they will not leave a third party to walk in. So they have decided that at whatever scenario it will be, they will just control the price, they will determine the output in the market. So oligopoly is a form of cartel, it's a form of groupism altogether. Monopolistic is a very, very interesting form of business. Now, if you look here, movies, novels, restaurants, these are all monopolistic. In India, probably we have different kinds of restaurants. You walk into any place, Bangalore, Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi, or probably any of the tier 2 or tier 3 cities in India, every single city has its own flavor, has its own type of restaurant. But ultimately, you will ask me this question, at the end of the day, any restaurant you go, you are going to have food. But what is so different about having the food? It is not just about the type of food we are talking about. Food is food in any format. But what is going to be differentiated is the service mentality, is the pricing, is the ambience. So the monopolistic itself is all about differentiated product. The same thing in a different manner. That's where monopolistic holds a very big form of market in day-to-day -day economy. So moving forward, let's look in detail, what is this monopoly? Existence of single seller, no substitutes available, so you have a complete control over the market price and the super normal profit altogether. So let's start with the first point here, single seller. Moment that word comes, single seller, it's so interesting, I'm the only person in the market. Who is going to challenge me in terms of selling the product? So when I become a single seller, that means to say that there is absolutely nobody to challenge me. I hold the complete control over the product. So whatever happens to the product, it is going to be through me. I decide the price of the product. So when people want to buy that product desperately, they need to come to me. I will decide the price and the best part of the story is that there is no substitute available to it, no close substitutes. So when you want to buy a mobile phone of a particular name, a particular brand altogether and if there is only one seller available in the entire city and there is no substitute to it, then it becomes a monopoly altogether. Now control over the market price. Now the pricing is a very, very interesting factor when it comes to economics. Who decides the price? Is it the government? Is it the people? Are the customers? Who are the people? Who are the deciding authority over the price? In Monopoly, it is the seller. The seller decides the price. So at any given point of time, the seller will have the control over the market price. He will not give it away to anybody. If he decides the price of one product as 1000 rupees on a given day, the 1000 remains there. You cannot change the price at any point of time. So what is very important for us to know here is that there is no bargaining concept. There is no way that the consumer can go and ask for a discount. It would not be a platform like Amazon or Flipkart where you can see discounted pricing model. This is a flat pricing model. So the seller decides the price as 1000 rupees. You need to pay the 1000 rupees if you are in want of the product. So that's where Monopoly has a supreme command over the market. You cannot challenge the seller at any given point of time. Last but not the least to forget, super normal profit. Everybody who starts a business is interested in making profit. But who is not interested when I'm going to say super normal profit, something way above the normal profit. If I can make 100 rupees a day, it's exciting. But if I can make 10,000 rupees a day, it's super exciting. It's way beyond my expectation and that's what you see in Monopoly. 
Why? Because you are the single seller. So the n number of customer, if the city has got 1 lakh customers, all the 1 lakh customers will have to come to you and you are going to reap the benefits of selling the product to the consumer. So whatever money that has been paid by the consumer goes straight into the pocket of the seller. So a super normal profit altogether. Whatever you set, you get it right back into the pocket altogether. So your return on investment by selling the product is absolutely fantastic. That's what Monopoly promises you in the long run altogether. Moving forward. Now we are going to talk about duopoly. What is this duopoly altogether? Now when you look into the diagram, when you look into the picture here, you will see there are two firms who are already in existence. Now that is very, very important. Are the firms there in existence? Yes, of course, in this case, there are theoretically two firms which are existing. The price is controlled by the two firms. So these two people are controlling the price. They're not going to give an option again to you. They're not going to say that whether the price is available, can you bargain over the price, can we discuss over the price? Absolutely no, it is purely controlled by these two people. People. Limited options. What do I mean by the word limited options? When a consumer walks into any shop, when a consumer goes into any retail format, the first thing that the consumer will always inspire, aspire altogether is that the price factor. Can I have a better pricing? Why? Because consumer is never happy with a single price mode. He wants to go to the shop, bargain for some time, find out what is the best option for him and again recheck himself and come back and say then I made my best shopping today. But here in Duopoly, theoretically speaking again, you don't have that option. The option is very, very limited. Why? Because if you leave one shop and go to the other shop, that guy is also going to talk to you in the same length and line. He is also going to tell you the same pricing factor. So he is not going to give you the option where you can make a choice. He, on the contrary, he is going to say that whatever price that was being fixed, that was agreed between the other shop, is going to be the same price I am going to give you. So at any given point of time, consumer will not have an option of changing the price. The price is already agreed between the two firms. So they are going to decide the price, keep it in the mind, fixed for the consumer and the profit is going to be divided exactly between both the people. So that means to say in duopoly, profit is going to be shared and there's not going to be much of options that is going to be provided to the consumer at any given point of time. Now, what is the product availability factor? If you look here in the product availability sector, now, the product is available, but between whom? It's again available between these two people. Now, in a realistic life factor, whenever you search for a product over Google or over any search engine for that matter, you get limited number of distributors, limited number of players in the city who are interested or who are the stockist of that particular product. So automatically for the consumer, the availability of the product, the word availability, we really need to focus on that. The word availability, the product is available, accessible only between that limited firm. So they own the control on supply of that firm. So tomorrow, if any consumer wants to find out the product other than the two people in the market, it is literally impossible. So in Duopoly, what happens is that the supply, the price, the control over the product or that particular service is held by two people. But in realistic factor, this is only a theoretical model, not much of Duopoly is being practiced anywhere. Just from the textbook standpoint, from the chapter standpoint, you need to know. So only two sellers are there, price is restricted, limited options and you also see that the product is made available only between these two sellers. The next slide on oligopoly that we were talking about is very, very important. When we come to oligopoly, we are going to talk about a kind of market which is more based upon a team effort. So oligopoly is a kind of market where we use this word called as cartel. Now what is this cartel all about? Cartel is nothing but an agreement that has been made 
by the group of organizations who are participating in that kind of market who will decide the price and who will also decide the output now for example if you look into opec what does opec stands for oil petroleum exporting countries so these are the organization there are seven countries who are involved in this cartel who decide the price of the crude oil every day now this is a quite an interesting form of market why because there are limited organizations altogether but what are the features of oligopoly let's look one by one the first one open versus closed oligopoly is a closed form of market why do i use this word closed form of market because oligopoly is limited by nature we are not going to allow each and everybody to participate it is not a free entry or exit it is a closed form of market where limited number of people are there and they will decide the price and the output so again in this form of market the consumers or the people will not have a direct link in terms of pricing and output it is pretty much fixed the second part of this market partial versus full now if you see here in this factor oligopoly is a full fledged by itself they will not allow people from anywhere to come out so it is a kind of market where you will have two factors that you need to understand one it is been full controlled by the members it is only partially known to the public as what happens but the full control in terms of pricing in terms of output in terms of deciding the market price is all been controlled by the cartel itself so oligopoly has got a full control inside only a partial visibility of knowledge goes outside so it's very very important in oligopoly to understand this factor next one perfect versus imperfect the answer is very much in front of you it is an imperfect kind of market why because it is not allowing exact number of buyers and sellers price is unknown not disclosed factors are not much known to the consumer it is an imperfect kind of market which is being controlled by the limited organizations who are playing in that kind of economy so it's an imperfect kind of market altogether moving forward it is on syndicated versus organized the next factor it is a syndicated organization what is the syndicated word altogether if you understand in the illegal businesses or any kind of business which is normally not into the lines of the perfect competition or a transparent business altogether we use the word mafia now the word mafia is not completely negative it does not mean anything that is completely negative or completely bad but let's try to understand the word mafia in terms of economics it means to say that it is a syndicated organization a very well addressed group organization which has got its own norms and protocols of operating so they will not allow anybody to just walk in and walk out you need to become a member of the forum and only the members will be given the rights to perform the duty to discuss on price to give out their veto rights all together so what i mean by a syndicated means the rights of operations are restricted it is only within the group it is only within the cartel all together it is a syndicated organization a very very dedicated organization a secretive kind of organization not much of knowledge can be revealed to the outer world and we will continue to do the business in that particular norms and conditions 
only. So that is what we say oligopoly is a syndicated organization and it is also a non-collusive market. It is very very important for us to know why because the non-collusive market in a collusive form of organization yes it is pretty much well built but if you see a non-collusive again it is an imperfect organization altogether. So in a non-collusive means that the price is again being fixed internally and you can see that the price is being well nominated already predetermined in the nature. So it is a more of a non-collusive structure altogether. So coming back in oligopoly it's a closed form fully controlled by the members an imperfect kind of market. It is an syndicated by nature and a non-collusive pattern altogether. Going forward, monopolistic competition. What is so interesting about monopolistic competition? The very word, large number of buyers and sellers. Now we are going to talk about a market like any other market in this world. So which means to say that there are large number of buyers and large number of sellers. So any day in any given market in any city across India, you will typically come across large number of buyers and large number of sellers. So each one of them will have the same kind of product but with a different pricing, with a different way of sales, a different methodology of customer approach altogether. So we are using this word called as product differentiation. What does the word product differentiation mean to you? The same product but what I am going to do here is that change the color, labeling, packaging, branding, everything and put it forward in such a way the consumer starts appreciating me. To give you an example here, if you look into the sanitizers business itself, Dettol, Savlon, Santur, Hammam, you name any kind of people who are acting in this business, Himalaya for that matter, each one of them are producing the same kind of sanitizer only with a different name with a different logo, with a different symbol or probably a methodology, a small shift on the pricing altogether. But ultimately the product is same, the product that is found inside the container that is same. The way it has been differentiated is probably because of pricing, branding, logo or symbol. So product differentiation is one of the key factors of monopolistic. I want to go to the market and tell people that I am different from the others. Though the consumers try to perceive me as one among the other product but I want to go and tell clearly that I am a differentiated product altogether. I want to sell myself better than the existing kind of products in the market. So that's why we are talking about product differentiation. The next factor existence of selling cost. If I'm going to sell this product in India or in Dubai or in London or in US there is going to be a selling cost factor. So what I make in India but I want to sell it in abroad there would be a marketing cost, a selling cost. So nothing is going to come off free here. We have to put in some selling cost factor based on the factors of selling cost there will be sales for that particular kind of product. So the existence of selling cost that itself makes this market very very realistic in nature. Today if I manufacture a product it might be about a sanitizer, it might be about a soap, a shampoo or a toothpaste or any kind of FMCG product altogether. I cannot go to the market just like that and sell it. There is a selling cost that is involved with every single product. So automatically that cost will be added to the sales and automatically the selling cost of the product has also to be taken care while fixing the price of the product. The next factor free entry and exit. This is a very very important factor there why because you can come out of that factor at any given point of time. You can see that the free entry and exit does happen at any given point of time. You can come into the market, you can go out of the market, there is no need to worry about it at any point of time. Next one, it's a price maker altogether. Now when I use that word price maker, that means to say that the price taking ability is being made completely by the monopolistic competition altogether. So what happens here is that 
in this monopolistic competition the people are not being allowed to just start giving the prizes it is the company it is the organization that will make the price make it and sell it to the consumer so there is an mrp that is fixed maximum retail price that is fixed by the organization and the organization will go and tell to the consumer this is the price at which i am selling the particular product so the consumer have to buy the product at that particular price only so that is what we call it as the concept of price maker i decide the price it is not the consumer who is going to decide the price and the company is not just going to take the price so when you go to the shop the shopkeeper will tell this is the price of the product you are at the right whether if you want to buy that product at that price or you can leave the shop saying that the price is not acceptable to me but at any given point of time it is a price making situation and not a price taking situation so the organization will have all rights to have a control over the price factor altogether now with this factor we come to the conclusion of today's session i hope and believe that the session was quite interesting and educative for you in the next session we shall talk about the graphs and the different types of representations that are involved with the kinds of imperfect market until then thank you stay blessed stay tuned and stay educative forever thank you once again